Hi, it's Alaska Granny. No matter what day it is in your life, you need fresh drinking water to maintain your life and your health. Today I wanted to share with you a water prepping to-do list. We know we need to store at least one gallon of water per person per day, and that is for all of the things that you would do from the minute you wake up until you go to bed at night. Think about all the ways that you use water, not only for drinking, but for cooking and bathing. If you only have that one precious gallon, you really need to know how important water is. We let the water run to get warm for our shower. We let the water run to get cool for a drink. So many of us take fresh drinking water for granted because we have a seemingly endless supply. But the day may come when that doesn't happen and you need to have a supply of water on hand. There are all different ways that you can store water. You can buy it in little containers. You can buy it in gallon containers. There are all kinds of containers that you may have on hand or you care to buy that you can fill up with water for your water storage needs. There are pros and cons to every type of water storage container. We need to be able to rotate and access our water. We also need to think about portability issues. If you needed to grab and go, take water with you, and it's all stored in a 55 gallon barrel, that's going to be a problem. So try to vary the size of the containers that you have and the places where you keep your water. Let's look first at bottled water that we commonly buy in the grocery store. Things that we can grab and go, put one in your hiking bag, in your lunch box, in your to-go kit, and they come in different sizes and they also come in different qualities. You can easily feel the different quality in the bottles and the bottles do actually tend to disintegrate. You can see that this one is misshapen and squishy. Water doesn't expire, but the containers can disintegrate. And so while you think you can buy water and set it aside and count on it always being there, it isn't necessarily the truth because it depends how you store it and the container that you use. Does that mean you shouldn't buy grab-and-go water bottles? No, it just means you need to actually rotate them so that they don't end up becoming wasted because once they start to disintegrate, I don't trust the water in it. I figure if the container is disintegrating, parts of whatever it's made from are now in the water and it's not water I want to drink. Does that mean I need to throw it all away? No, you could maybe use it for dishwashing, use it for hygiene, pour it over your plants, find a way to use the water, don't just pour it down the drain and waste it. Even the large containers tend to disintegrate. I have a stack of these water bottles and the sides are starting to cave in. It's a handy size that I like to bring home when I go to the grocery store, but you need to remember to also be rotating them, keeping an eye on them, because after a couple of years, if the container is starting to get saggy, then you need to rotate out these containers and replace them with something new. One of the reasons I really like to stock up on these, they always come with a nice sturdy handle and it's a size that you can easily carry. Water is heavy, it weighs about eight and a half pounds per gallon. So most of us can transport gallons of water, but when you get into larger containers, then it can become very heavy and cumbersome. There are lots of containers that you might have around your home that you can fill yourself with water from your tap. Water from the tap, if it's coming from a safe drinking water, you can fill these containers. You don't need to do anything to it because the water is already safe to drink. You can fill up empty canning jars, you can fill up empty soda bottles, sports drinks bottles, and you can even refill things like reusable Nalgene type bottles. Why have a shelf of empty water bottles in your kitchen or your cupboards that you use when you go out if you could keep them stored full in your kitchen. That doesn't mean that's the water you have to use if you're going out, but you could. They're already filled and ready to go. All water isn't just for drinking and cooking. We need some for hygiene and sanitation. I like to save big empty detergent bottles that have a pour spout spigot on it. I like to save these and take them out to my granny camp, which is my Alaska off-grid cabin. There's no electricity, there's no running water, it's basically a dry off-grid cabin. And so I can fill these up and I have a little sink that's built in, but it doesn't have running water or plumbing. It just, I put a bucket under the sink, I set these detergent bottles on the counter, 
and then you can use the water by pressing on the button and it releases a little bit at a time. This is also great if you go camping with children because they can't just turn it on and let it run and then all the water is gone when they want to wash their hands or something. You can control the amount of water that is used for each event by pressing the button and then releasing it. They're also a size that's easy to carry because they're just a few gallons. Next, you can store water in containers that you buy from the store, such as four gallons, five gallons, six gallons, seven gallons, and all the way up to 55 gallon water barrels. I have several different kinds of these, big blue aquatainers, which are actually my favorites, because they also have this spigot end on them. And I like to fill them up and take them out to granny camp, and that's the ones I use for my drinking water. However, they're pretty heavy. Something to think about is how you're going to be able to get the water out of it. Are you going to lift it up and tip it over and pour it out every time you want a drink of water? One of the things you might consider is having some kind of a pump. I found this battery operated pump on Amazon. You can insert it into the container, press the button, and then the water will flow out of the tube. So you can get a little or a lot. If you have a 55 gallon barrel, you definitely need some kind of a hose system and the pump isn't going to work because it isn't long enough. It's designed for something like the five, six, or seven gallon containers. So you want something like a shaker siphon hose. You can insert that all the way down into your barrel and then it has a little like a marble thing in the valve. You shake it up and down and it creates the siphon effect and then the water will come flowing out of the hose. And that's how you can get all the water all the way down to the very bottom of your water storage barrel. Are you wondering how to sanitize your containers when you very first get them? You want to wash them out with a bleach solution. I'll put a link to a video I made on how to sanitize your water storage containers when you first get them in case you're interested in that. Another easy way to have extra water on hand is to refill plastic storage containers, place them in the freezer. Then you have not only a way to keep your freezer colder if the power goes out, but once these are melted, then you have another source of fresh drinking water. Water needs to be stored in a cool, dry, dark place. You absolutely need to keep the water dark, and that's why the barrels come as opaque, that no light can get through them, because the sunlight is what allows bacteria and algae to grow inside your water storage container. So if you are refilling containers that are clear, make sure that you store them in a dark cabinet. If you have large water containers such as barrels, don't store them directly on a cement floor because chemicals from cement can actually leach into containers and it could contaminate your water. Put something down like a piece of wood, a pallet, some cardboard, something to keep your water storage container from being in direct contact with a cement floor. Also remember water is very heavy. Store it on the bottom levels in your pantry or your storage area. It's very heavy. You wouldn't want the shelves to break because the water was too heavy or one of your containers got a leak and it uh, ruined all the food you had stored below it. Then also remember because they're very heavy, don't go stacking them on top of each other when it isn't appropriate. The containers are already holding so much weight of the water they probably can't hold the weight of more containers full of all that water. So don't stack these so high that you squish them and damage your containers. Never store water in recycled milk jug type containers. They are not sturdy. They're not designed to last. And it's nearly impossible to get all of the milk solids out of those kind of containers anyway. And then it's going to contaminate your water. So anytime you're reusing something that even if it held food before, know that containers that held food with strong odors, it's nearly impossible to get those odors out. You don't want to find in an emergency, you want to cook rice and your water smells like root beer. Can you use those still to store water? Absolutely, because you need water for hygiene. You can use those containers that had strong odors in them Store them away under the sink. You'll have water where you need it in an emergency for sanitation and hygiene. Then you need to think about what if you've used up all of your safe drinking water and all you can do now is go and collect some wild water. You need to have a way to filter the water. Even if the water is still running in your home, sometimes water becomes contaminated flowing into your home. Just look at places like Flint, Michigan 
or they had some brain-eating amoeba that got in the water in Texas. So it's not safe to drink even if it's coming into your home from the city system. You want to have a top quality water filter. And remember, it's not a filter like a Brita. Those are filtering out uh, unsavory flavors and odors in water. They're not doing anything to purify the water. You need a water purification filter that takes out the bacteria, the viruses, the contaminants. You want something very sturdy that's dependable so that you have the best fresh drinking water possible. You can get everything from a live straw to a Berkey water filter. Purify water from any source, whether it's coming out of the faucet in your sink or you're collecting wild water. You can purify water by boiling it. I'll put a link to a video I made on how to purify water by boiling it. You can purify water using bleach. You need an eyedropper. I'll put a link to a video I made on how to purify water with bleach. There are all kinds of water purification tablets such as aqua tabs. There are PNG water packets that if you collect what's called turbid water or wild dirty water, you could even scoop it up in a five gallon bucket, add one of these packets, stir it around, follow the directions, you stir it all around and then you let the water sit. The chemical packet collects all of what's known as flock and it all settles to the bottom and then the water on the top is still fresh and safe to drink. Another thing you might consider for your bug out bag is a silcock tool. It's a plumbing wrench that if you've ever been around commercial buildings, they look like they have the faucet but the handle is missing and with a silcock tool, you could turn on the water at a commercial building in an emergency and get the fresh water that you need. If you live in hurricane country and you have advanced warning of an emergency, maybe you want something like a water bob. It goes into your bathtub and it's like a gigantic plastic bag. You can fill it up with up to 100 gallons. It even includes a pump so that you can pump it out as you need it. Then you'll have a source of fresh drinking water that lasts about six weeks. Water is the most important prepping supply because it's something that we rely on every single day to keep us alive and healthy. Go over this water prepping to-do list and make sure that you have all of your water supplies up to date and ready to go, no matter what the future brings. If you liked my video, I hope you'll share it with someone who might enjoy it. Learn more at alaskagranny.com and please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel.